Hey friends, so this is a story that goes with our coloring page today, and it's the true story of Hadav Payang, The Boy Who Grew a Forest, by Sophia Goles, illustrated by Kayla Heron, published by Sleeping Bear Press. The best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time to plant a tree is now. Proverb. In India, on a large river island, among farms and families hard at work, there lived a boy who loved trees. Trees meant shade, food, and shelter for many. But each rainy season, flood water swallowed more and more of the beautiful tree-covered land. The boy's precious island was shrinking, eroding away with the rushing river, leaving empty sandbars behind. The boy witnessed animals stranded on those sandbars, their homes destroyed. He feared that if animals withered with the trees, people would too. The boy shared his fears with the village. The elders explained that the only way to help animals was to create new homes for them. They gifted the boy with 20 bamboo saplings. Alone, he canoed down the muddy river. He wished he could cover all the land with trees. But a large sandbar nearby was a place to start. The land was too barren for animals, the shores too sandy for leafy trees. Would bamboo grow? The boy hoped. Determined, he began to plant one shaft, two, then three. Every day, he watered the saplings by hand, sweat trickling down his face and chest. He built a watering system to help and lugged heavy buckets from the river. His arms grew tired, his back sore. Still, each day he tended to the plants and over time the bamboo patch grew into a healthy thicket. The boy was proud of his work, but he worried it wouldn't be enough to stop the swelling river or to provide shelter for the animals. If he wanted more plants to grow, he would have to create richer soil. The boy carried cow dung, earthworms, termites, and angry red ants that bit him on the journey to their new home. He bought seeds from neighboring villages, over trails, through brush, down the river. Each day, he planted. As years passed and the boy grew, so did a forest. 10 acres, 20 acres, then 40 Wildlife returned for the first time in many years. Buffalo, one-horned rhinos, and snakes, gibbons, migratory birds, and elephants. The man's forest teemed with life and diversity. Not everyone was happy. Fear swept over the villages when tigers arrived. So the man planted more grasses to attract small animals that would keep the tigers happy in the forest. Elephants wandering into neighboring farms to feast on the crops, so the man planted more fruiting trees to help feed the hungry elephants. Some wanted to harvest the forest to build homes, but the man was there to plant anew. Others tried to hunt the animals for their horns and fur, but the man was there to protect. Few thought the forest would last, but the man believed in its strength. Now in India, on a large river island among wildlife and trees as tall as buildings, there lives a man who has planted a forest. The forest is called Malai, after a man named Hadav Malai Payang, who never stopped planting and pruning and protecting. Hadav Payang said, Only by growing plants, the earth will survive. And that is the end of our book so I really hope that you guys liked reading about him he was really cool so we learned he's from the country of India and he used plants to help the animals around him and to solve problems which was really cool you've never thought about seeds solving a problem but when those tigers were hungry and he was worried about the villagers he just planted tall grass so that smaller animals would come and live there and the tiger could hunt them so he created a whole nother environment a whole nother ecosystem so that 
the villagers wouldn't be in danger and the animals wouldn't be in danger either because if the tigers were to come into the village, then the tigers would be in danger. So we have to be very, very thoughtful about our planting, just like Hadav Piyang. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed.